will now be looking at how the Librex Alfresco Smart Synchronization Controller is configured. First of all, I will log on to my Alfresco demo system to show you the, the scenario we'll be using. So this is a fictive university called the World University where all the students documents are kept. I will be using a site for this demo which is the student site. If I go to my document library I can see that I, that I actually have three students in my university. Those folders were created from Librex after the documents were captured. So we can see there's a num naming policy used for the, f the folder creation which is last name, first name, and then student ID. And then we can have subfolders like admission and also use metadata on other subfolders. So we can see we use the year and the program that was used. Same thing within the subfolder, we can see I have a naming policy on my document creation which is using student ID and document type. We can also see that the document was converted to a PDF format after it was scanned initially in TIFF format. I also send along some metadata like the capture metadata, for example the DPI, the date of the creation, and other metadata like the also the document library we can see who scanned the document at what point in time. So this is uh, the site that is fed from Librex after the documents are captured. Now I will go to my Librex administration tool to see how this is configured. First thing I have to do is create a connection to my Alfresco uh, system. So I will go to my connections parameter and we can see here I have my Alfresco local connection that's configured. In this case it will be the VP demo 007 that's used. So I have just a name for the connection, I have an HTTP connection, the URL of the server that's used and a name and password for the user that's used to send over my documents. Next thing I have to tell Librex how the hierarchy of the documents must be configured. So I go to my Alfresco synchronization controller. Well first we see that the connection is used over there. Next thing I want to do is configure the, the hierarchy of the documents. So we can see that the documents are stored are stored on their company home to the student site. So here we could be using another site within Alfresco. We could also be sending documents directly to the repository in any part of the repository, either a site or non-site. We can see there's a binding to the Alfresco site that's done over here. Under the student site, we can see we have to create the student folder. So this is the level level over here. First of all, we have the Alfresco binding, so we can bind it to any uh, any content we have on the Alfresco side. Then we say, how do we do we name this folder? So in this case, we had last name, first name, and student ID, which is the default. So we could have depending on different conditions. Uh, I could name it one way or the other way. So let's say the student ID is over 1 million, then it's the old format and I, I, I name the folder in a specific way. Also, we can see that I can send aspects to this uh, this folder. In this, case, in this case, it's the aspect student that I send. So if I double click on this, the aspect student is last name with the alfresco binding on the other side, first name with the alfresco binding, and we go on this way. So we can also see that I also have my binding to my Alfresco student aspect over here. So this can be all, can be all configured through the drop downs in the system. I could also send properties and not only aspects. At the folders level, in this case, I don't have any property. Same thing on the admission level, so we can see that the title of the, of the admission is just a simple admission, uh, straightforward. At the program level, we can see that we had the year and the program that was used to create the folder. Same thing here, I have an aspect which is the aspect admission, where we, I use the year and program to send the, uh, the aspect values to Alfresco. And again here I don't have any properties. We'll see the properties at the document level. 
Also, when I create a folder and I send it to Alfresco, we have the, co the configuration action to take if the space doesn't exist yet. So do I create the space or do I, I use a script? So this is a script in Java language that can do some really advanced configuration. So let's say if this, this space doesn't exist, please look if there's a... Uh, if it doesn't exist, for example, the MBA, well, look if there's a space for EMBA and then put the documents within this folder. This is kind of the logic I could be configuring through a script. So this is really open for any kind of logic I will uh, I can be configuring. I could also set in a condition. Condition would be would be saying, okay, if I'm I'm uh, near 2012, send this uh, folder to the program uh, f folder. But for let's say before 2005, then send the, the document to a status folder. So I couldn't really say. Uh, depending on the business scenario, create one folder or the other. So I, this is not only uh, one path that we have to follow. I can put in condition to see what's the folder I have to create. At the document level, you can see I have my admission letters over here. So my admission letter is always named student ID and then admission letter at, uh, at long. Same thing here on the student level. Well, first of all, I have my Alfresco binding also on the, on the document level. And I link into a document model within, within Librex. So the document model within Librex is really where I put in all my data extraction, all my, my um, capture logic within Librex. So same thing as at the folder level, I configure my aspects. You can see I have the capture aspects, which is like the DPI I was showing you showing you earlier. So this is how I, I send my DPI to, to Alfresco and all this other uh, capture data. F so I have some properties. In this case, I don't have any property. And I have the format. So here I say any document converted, converted to a PDF format. And I, I can also same thing as at the folder level, I can see the, say the action to take if the document name already exists in the space. So do I create a new version of the same document? Do I use a counter to create a different document? Or do I go with an advanced script? So I could say if the document already exists, go validate some data within an extra external system. Again, this is using uh, JavaScripts, not JavaScript, but JavaScripts to configure the, the, the logic there. And I can also put in a, docu a condition to say, okay, if it's um, if it's an, uh, an admission letter for an old student, then I put the document within the status status or within another part of the another subfolder. So this is really to say, depending on business logic, I send a document to point A or point B. So we can see that the admission letters will be sent to the program folders and the transcripts will be sent to the transcript folders. Status document will just be sent under status uh, under those co conditions. So I could always say, okay, I, don't, I want to create a new folder. I just come here and create new folder. I set up my new folder to do this, uh, this uh, new binding. So FDR uh, letters, let's say. I do my alfresco binding to my letters here, which I don't have actually, but this is just to show you how this can be configured just through a simple UI. So you don't have to rely on any developer, on any uh, advanced user to configure your hierarchy of folders. If I some, uh, I have some other parameters I can configure within uh, the the smart connector. Well. I can just uh, put in some logs. This is mostly technical logs to support the uh, uh, the administration of the system. I can also have some job time parameters. For example, notify on error. So I could say, if Librex couldn't send uh, the document to Alfresco, do I want to notify someone? So let's say there is a maintenance in the Alfresco folder and, and the Alfresco system. I want to send a notification to administration group. Uh, this is where this would be configured. So this is mostly an overview of, of how do I 
how do I configure my smart connector for Alfresco. Thank you.